I have had quite the week, let me tell you. The ending of Hell in a Cell and the subsequent show that was Monday Night Raw may well have broken me. Are you <laughs> kidding me, Vince? <laughs> They're such bloody cowards. No, they weren't. They booed you out the pissing building and started chanting AEW to pro wrestling. Nevertheless, my homage to the excellent network aside... I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! I've come to a worrying realisation. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and this is the disturbing truth behind Paul Heyman's Raw. WWE fooled us once again recently by bait and switching the promised Seth Rollins vs Rey Mysterio dream match, hoping the awe-inspiring sight of Brock Lesnar suplexing Rey Mysterio and his son into another dimension would compensate for it. And it kinda did. But the fact remains that the previous week's fatal five-way number one contenders match on Raw was a complete waste of time, a waste precisely of 20 minutes and 21 seconds. It was also a complete waste of talent. Ricochet, a performer previously presented as special, was presented as, well, pretty bloody normal under the elimination format, all to simply build the beast up. This sort of pointless, unflattering booking, which you can seemingly expect on a weekly basis on Monday Night Raw, chips away at the aura of a performer through basic conditioning. Don't worry though, false advertising and systematic normalisation are far from the only rotten WWE practices Paul Heyman has continued in his role as executive director. The Cedric Alexander equals Berry narrative is exhausting, but to summarise as much as can be mustered, if this isn't a burial, Hardly a bloody push. Cedric stared at the lights for AJ Styles on three consecutive occasions last month, which I suppose isn't as bad as celebrating losing as Gary the Goat Garbutt. But the manner of those losses is telling. Styles defeated him on the Clash of Champions kickoff show in under five minutes without the help of his OC stablemates. Honestly, Cedric Alexander puts up less of a fight than me sticking to my bloody diet. Oh. Oh. Mm. Cedric Alexander couldn't pin the tail on the sodding donkey. And that's not a burial. Okay, alright, well, Paul Heyman has 50 50 would his character arc. That sounds familiar. Also familiar is the second cock storyline Heyman has introduced. This bears repeating. Paul Heyman has scripted two storylines in which two larger-than-life WWE superstars, trademark, have been cuckolded by their wives. Honestly, there are more cooks on Monday Night Raw than over baby faces. Canellis is, according to his wife Maria, a man so useless and impotent he couldn't possibly have fathered her unborn child because, in her words, he has a vagina. And on last week's Raw, Bobby Lashley made his return. Did he attack somebody to re-establish his dominance? Or did he passionately kiss the wife of a fellow superstar and then on this week's episode basically get ready to boink her whilst they just stood there and tuck it like a big old sack of crap? Don't worry though, because Rusev finally got angry this week. He kicked the crap out of King Corbin and Randy Orton after Lana got prepared to bump uglies with my man, Bobby Lashley. It's too late though. His roos is cooked. Seriously though, what's this about? Why is Paul Heyman inviting memes about revealing the contents of his Pornhub search history? Is, I don't know, Becky Lynch in next month's big ratings grab gonna neg Seth Rollins being crap at Twitter and let the fiend in? Why are there two cuckolding storylines on Monday Night Raw, a professional wrestling show? Two! So according to Dave Meltzer, Heyman is apparently into stuff that relates to his life. A lot of his friends had a lot of marital problems, so it's soap opera for guys with the idea that you date the hot girl and she screws you in the end. Uh-oh. There you have it, a progressive and not at all alienating storyline for a female demographic WWE are desperately trying to grab it. Isn't that Paul Heyman's whole deal? Isn't he meant to have his finger on the old pulse? Heyman is showing his age in this war for the younger demographic. Perhaps he's trying to sex up WWE storylines within PG parameters, but all that
captivating, lurid shagging happens, you know, off screen. Maybe it's schlocky tripe he's self-aware of that he books with the express idea of instigating WTF conversations and then drawing eyes to these storylines that actually are important. Sex! Right, now that we've got your attention, you get the idea. What does it achieve? Or more importantly, how much damage does it do? It is impossible to care about Mike Kanellis, but Sorry to say this, Mike, that's almost acceptable. With respect to the man who had a very respectable ring of honor run, he's never really meant a damn in WWE, has he? But Rusev, he different. He was once very much over as a beloved cult babyface, but this new gimmick has completely removed him from his core appeal. Rusev was always best when he was delighted with himself. And now he's utterly miserable. He's not the only one. I mean, what is the end goal here? Will it be revealed Rusev was a total dick to Lana at a summer camp in Bulgaria at age 12 or something? And so she took comfort in the arms of foreign exchange student Bobby Lashley, who'd been teased mercilessly by Rusev for his lisp. And I don't know, this is them getting their revenge years later? Actually, that's quite good. Don't get me wrong here, Paul Heyman has drastically improved the flow of Monday Night Raw. It is a far more watchable show under his pen. His opening segment grabs your attention, he manages to maintain it inexplicably for the exhausting three hours, and he's even committed fully to several characters that aren't called Brock Lesnar. Seth Rollins cleanly defeated Brock Lesnar, Baron Corbin won a triumphant, meticulously booked King of the Ring tournament, and he has conveyed The Fiend's terrifying presence throughout Monday Night Raw. I mean, and then Hell in a Cell happened. We haven't got time. But WWE ultimately is an increasingly antiquated and unpopular soap opera. And it still is under Paul Heyman's vision. It's just a lot sleazier. He isn't the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy, who probably doesn't deserve a spanking. He deserves, apparently according to his own booking, to watch his wife, who callously is doing this in public, take several inches of meat. Other than Heyman, who is this for? This niche self-indulgence isn't too dissimilar from Vince McMahon's toilet humour, and God knows we've been sick of that for over a decade. The disturbing truth behind Paul Heyman's roar is he has somehow conspired to emasculate the roster more than Stephanie McMahon did and normalise the roster more than Vince McMahon did. Meet the new boss. There you have it, that is what I think is the disturbing truth behind Paul Heyman's Monday Night Raw. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. My thanks to Michael Sidgwick for writing this editorial. Thank you for watching. I'm off for a lie down now. I'll see you soon. Look at the marvel that I have created. Uh, comics. They called me a fool for trying to put a dead meme onto a t-shirt. A damn bold fool. A damn bold fool with an ass that won't quit. It got quite personal towards the, the end there. But look who's laughing now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Quiet, my son, my ugly son. For my other creation rises. Look at the quality fabric, hand-stitched by blind orphans. The perfect letter spacing calculated so meticulously that Rich Hudson had an erection for months about it. And a colouring so deep that I had to buy the dye off the dark web. Oh, for God's sake, Josh! Sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> oh, Marvel. Oh no, the beast has grown angry. Angered by our drab fashion choices, I am such a fool to think that it wouldn't try to infect us with its perfect, perfect design. Quick, we must do something to appease the beast. Why don't we buy one from shop.worldculture.com? Oh. Look, it's already got Scott Nash! Oh, oh. oh no! But where can I buy one? Are you kidding me? This is why I don't give you any extra lines. But oh, 
also at shop.whatculture.com. Quick, let's go and buy one right now. Let's go buy one right now. Right now. Oh, don't you try hard now. You've already lost your bit. Oscar's in the f***ing bin. Ah, there we go. Doesn't that look better? I feel so virile and alive. And it's also fixed your hump. That's actually pretty good. Now, do yourself a favor and act like your mum and spread the love, aka her legs, and buy yourself one of these glorious dead memes on a t-shirt, courtesy of this handsome chap right here. You're very, very welcome. Cut! Jesus Christ, mine is oh, so it's itchy. What? What? Uh, it stinks. I pissed on yours. The worst font ever. I want to die. <sighs>